Hello guys, it's Jackbox55 here, and today I'm going to be showing off Infernities. Now this is kind of like the time when I did Nordics, where I have a minimum understanding of the deck of how it's supposed to be played. So yeah, but after many research of YouTube and whatever, I think I got a consistent build, and this is what I have here to bring to you guys. I actually really like this deck. It really benefits me a lot. Uh, some people might think it's not that great, like how I have it built. They might prefer the Beetle build, or maybe just one Archfiend or Avenger build, I guess you can say, or whatever. So, I mean, if I basically tried my best of this deck, and that's all. I can really say so. Yeah, so I'm gonna try my best to explain Infernities as this is kind of a tough one to explain. So one thing to note, this deck has 14 monsters in it. Mostly Infernity decks have 13 or 14 monsters because they don't want to have too many monsters due to the fact that they don't want to dead draw into monsters. So. That's something to keep in mind. And yeah, so this deck is basically a synchro based deck. Uh, they do XYZ like very little because of the fact that, well, actually, I don't know why, but, <laughs> but they do uh, synchro a lot. And that's pretty much what I know them for. So, anyways. Let's actually start in the deck and get into the combos and yada yada yada. So one Armageddon Knight, you basically put a card that's a dark in the grave. Mostly you're going to target the Archfiend of Avenger. And yeah, that's pretty much why he's there. Then after that, he pretty much becomes like dead. Like someone could kill him if they want to and you wouldn't care. Uh, next up we have one Dark Greffer. The first part doesn't matter, but the second part you discard one to one dark to put another dark in the grave so you can dump Armageddon if you want to. Anyways, but... Catch turn. Okay. You could dump Armageddon. You could dump uh, Avenger. Those are the recommended ones. And I would put Avenger in the grave or I'd put Archfiend in the grave. And we'll explain right now why we do that. Uh... Or also you can dump by uh, Street Patrol, I almost forgot about that. But yeah, that's pretty much all I need to explain about that. Next up we have Infernity Archfiend. Now let me go over a little bit about Infernities. Infernities involve is a deck involves having no cards in hand. Their effects go off based off of having no cards. So the less cards are in hand, the better. So I'm not going to go over the part where they have to have no cards in hand. I'm just going to go basically over what they do. So basically what this does is, except during damage, I don't know how you can draw that during damage step, but anyways. So when you draw this card, and apparently not during damage step, and you have no other cards in hand, you can special summon this card from your hand. And Anytime you special summoned, while you have no cards in your hand, you can add one Infernity card, monster, spell, or trap, whatever. Most of the time when you special summon them out in the first place, you're always going to really go for Barrier, because Barrier is like the best card in the deck, other than the monsters, <laughs> the best trap, I could say. But if you don't have any other plays than Archfiend, then mostly we're going to go for Necromancer to actually get our deck running. And if you have a bunch of Archings in the grave, we're going to go for Mirage. So that's something to keep in mind. So yeah, if you have a good setup, you're mostly going to go for Barrier or even Inferno, depending on the situation. If you don't have a good setup, you're mostly going to go for Necromancer or Mirage. You really don't want to add Avenger to your hand. Avenger does a lot more in the grave, and let me tell you why. 
basically when a monster you control is destroyed by battle of course and it can't be Avenger but when it's destroyed by battle and sent to the grave you can bring this card back and its level is equal to the card that was just destroyed and of course you have to have no cards in your hand for that to work so for anyone that doesn't understand what that exactly means which I'm pretty sure you guys understand right now if Archfiend gets destroyed by battle this card will bring itself back after he's sent to the grave and he is level, his level will be 4 so that's why it's important to get him in the grave because you bring him back and then you can synchro up with something else and make like level 8, level 7s or even if this, well it's still level 7s and 8s even this card, you know bring back, get one go like I don't remember if we have Mist Worm in here. I'm pretty sure we do. And Mist Worm it up, you know. It's pretty good, so. And I hate when I do that. So, yeah. Avenger, really good card. Uh, it's a little better than Beetle, due to the fact that Beetle, I believe, needs to have, have no cards in hand. So, if you draw into a Beetle, and then you bring out a Beetle. For example, if you have a Fernity Beetle on the field, and then you have an Fernity Beetle in hand, it pretty much disrupts the play. So, you know, we'll go over that in a little while. Uh, next is a Fernity Mirage. And basically what its effect is, is it can't be special summoned, of course. And of course, no cards in hand as usual. Basically, he's called a Haunted Times 2. Only for Infernity though. You tribute him. And you get two Infernities. So you can get two Archfiends to get two Barrier or a Necromancer, whatever. You know, you pretty much will have no effects while if you do two Archfiends, so. so. Something to keep in mind. But mostly I like to go for two Necromancer, Necromancers to get like Archfiend and Avenger or even two Avengers if I have monsters already and we make like army arm or something like that you know the options are kinda hard it's a synchro deck so you know it's kinda hard for me to tell you what to go into basically when I go into the synchros you have a general idea of what to go into though because they are some really interesting synchros in the extra deck uh, also another thing to note I have a I did have a side deck saved but it's deleted, so yeah, I'll go over cards to help out the deck. It's just that it's deleted, so I can't remember everything I put in there. So, uh, yeah, we have three in front of the Necromancer. Basically, what its ability is is when it's normal summon, it's changed to defense, like a certain summoner monk we know of. And basically, what it does is, uh, what is the thing? You bring back. Uh, an Inferno from the grave as long as you have no monsters on your hand and of course it can't spawn in itself from the grave but you know it's not really a problem also another really good play to do like first turn if you don't want to go all out is just set this and then go like all out like summon a lot of things whatever it's not a heavy s special summon deck until you have no cards in your hand that's the main thing. You have to have no cards in your hand for this card, for this deck to be, like, over excessive about his plays. So that's why we don't have a bunch of monsters in here. We only have 14 and it's doing good that way. Uh, yeah, so we have two Street Patrol. I don't know how to pronounce that first word. And first off, when it destroys a monster by battle, you inflict damage equal to the destroyed monster's level. Okay, and it really doesn't matter about that because this card usually is not going to get that effect off anyways Due to the fact that we really want the card for its other effect It says you can banish this card from your grave and special summon one fiend type with 2,000 or less attack And of course we're going to be special summoning Archfiend, Archfiend to get Barrier if we wanted to Or if we wanted to get 
Mirage. As I said, we don't want to add Avengers. And you can even add Necromancer as well. So, yeah, pretty much. Uh, as soon as Event Archfiend gets special summoned, he's pretty much good to go back to the grave to wait for another special summon. So, just so you know. Uh, and that's basically it for the monsters. It's not really a high monster count. You need to keep your monsters low. Now, another thing is you can't run... You, you shouldn't be running, like, a bunch of continuous stuff in this deck. Like, let's say you want to do Wall of Revealing Light or Swords of Revealing Light. Swords you probably could get away with, but... Really, you just want to play, like, the quick play stuff. Not really stuff that lingers around too long. So, yeah. We have one Book of Moon. Put something face down defense. To help protect yourself. One Dark Hole. I'm debating about taking it out due to the fact that Lightning Vortex does basically the same thing. But, also, it doesn't destroy your own monsters. So, yeah. Dark Hole is probably going to get token out for Lightning Vortex. Uh, one full of spray, a dump Avengers, or even Patrol. Uh, one Infernity Launcher. Basically, uh, once per turn, this is probably the only continuous spell. But it's a really good continuous spell. And basically, once per turn, you can send one Infernity Monster from your hand to the graveyard. Wait, how would I do that? You can send one Infernity Monster from your hand to the graveyard while you have no cards in your hand. Uh, that really confuses me. I actually have never used Launcher, but I'm pretty sure that it counts as if, like, you're gonna... So what I think it means is that if you have one Infernity in your hand, you would send that only Infernity in your hand, then the part about no cards in your hand would kick in, so... Pretty sure that's how that works. As I said, I haven't used this card yet, but it's really good. Trust me about it. Uh, so anyways, so, oh no, that's one thing but all by itself, okay, I think, yeah, that's one thing by itself, so once per turn you can send one Infernity Monster from your hand to the graveyard, also another effect it has is while no cards in your hand, you can send this card to the graveyard, and you special summon two Infernity Monsters, and as I said, you can go into a Necromancer, Gastrant. You go on a Necromancer, special summon stuff out. Mirage can't be special summoned, so good luck with that. Avenger is really good to get back from the grave. And Archfiends are good too to search out the deck a little more. So yeah. I mean, it's limited at one for a reason. Yeah. Uh, 3 MST, get rid of the back row. Uh, pretty much the best thing right now. I guess you can run bait dolls as well if you want to, but MST does pretty good at itself. One, one for one, and basically you send one monster from your hand to the grave, so that's summon another monster. Uh, this is a weird concept too. Actually, no, it's not because you can only go for Avenger. Because I'm pretty sure last time I did it, it showed Mirage as well as an option. Oh no, actually. Mirage is... It can't be special summoned from the grave. Okay. So one for one still works on him, which is good. If you need more monsters, or if you just need a tuner. Okay. I, I keep getting that mixed up. Uh, one reinforcement on the army. Brings a warrior from your deck to your hand. So... Yeah, we're adding one of these two. Pretty much. That's pretty much all I have to say about that. And once you go through Armageddon Knight and Dark Griffer, looks like, yeah. You pretty much have no more use for this, so. Kind of bummer, but it does search out a little bit better. If you want to, you can switch this out for a Lord of Darkness. Which I prefer to use to get rid of one of these two. If it comes to that. Uh, you don't want to do pod duality as well. Due to the fact that you need to special summon a lot in this deck. So 
you know, you could get away with it, but I wouldn't recommend it. One bottomless trap hole, you get rid of monsters. Two call the haunted, the special stuff, special summon stuff on the grave, such as Necromancer or even Archfiend or even Avenger. Or even if you wanted to, you could bring this back and dump Avenger. Uh, when Kapulse bounce something back to the hand, dimensional prison, banish this stuff. Really better than armor. Gets rid of Stardust, so Stardust doesn't do nasty things to your cards. Um, and gets rid of those annoying things that you can't destroy, so pretty good. Three barriers, the main good trap of the deck. Well, all the other traps are good, just this one's the best out of the Fernities. And basically, he's like solemn for it, like it negates us. Well, not really solemn, because solemn negates summon as well. But basically, when your opponent activates a spell or a trap or a monster effect, so if your opponent activates an effect and you control a face up attack position Fernity, which we'll go into those in a little bit, some other Fernities that are options. You can negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. Three of them are really good. It basically stops your opponent from doing a lot of things. Uh, also, Light and Darkness can't negate this because of the fact that it's Speed Spell 3 is Light and Darkness is Speed Spell 2. So this card will outpower Light and Darkness by like tenfold. Ugh. Sorry about that. I'm drinking some water so that my throat doesn't get dry while trying to commentate this. Um, two Infernity Inferno. You discard two cards from your hand. Up to, so it doesn't have to be two, it could be one. And the same number of Infernity cards from your deck to the graveyard. So you discard like two Avengers and you send. If you send one from your hand to the grave, you send one from your deck to the grave, and vice versa. So you send two Avengers, you'll send two Archery. Not much I can say about that. I guess you could really run this at one and put, like, Infernity Break, I accidentally hit left trigger there. Which, I guess, but this card makes it where... Infernity Break makes it where you're banishing stuff, this card makes it where... Everything's in the grave and still liable to play, so pretty good. Also, keep in mind, Infernities were a lot better when Monster Reborn was a thing, so. Yeah, if you get a hard time with this deck, it might be because of that. Uh, two Mirror Force to help protect stuff. Trenchal is okay, but Mirror Force does a lot more damage, I think, in the terms of this deck, so. And when I mean more damage, I mean not destroying your monsters, but, you know, whatever. One Solemn Warning to stop the summon. Two Starlight, if your opponent decides, oh, I'm going to Mirror Force you, you can activate this and negate your opponent's card. And I think two is pretty good. I mean, you don't draw into two, like, right off the bat, unless you're really unlucky. And basically, like, if you want to, you could even trench roll yourself. And you Starlight and bring out Stardust. Like, you know, your this card is actually really good in this deck. I, I can't complain about it. it Make sure that you don't get, like, totally wrecked by Mirror Force or something weird like that. You can take it out, but I personally like to have it for that reason. Not to get wrecked by weird trap cards that your opponent would be running. And with Torrential Tribute, the blow up the field, you know. Ah, I started choking. One Catastor, gets Catastor. Army Arm, gets Army Arm. Uh, Alright, here's where we go into some things that are new. 100 Ice Dragon. Basically, by removing from play one level four or 6 or lower dark effect monster from your grave. Alright, uh, I have an inch. Okay. You will... Uh, Dark effect monster from your grave until the end phase. 
Just treat this card's name as that monster's name. And this card gave the same effect as that monster while face up on the field. When this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, add one Earthbound Immortal from your deck to the graveyard or hand. Okay, so this deck apparently works with uh, Earthbound Immortals, but that's for another day. Basically, what you're trying to do is you're basically getting like Phantom of Chaos ability. Except the fact that it is, is that it's only darks. It has to be a dark effect monster, of course. And this card gets treated as the name and gets the effect. So basically, you can like fusion summon with this thing if you want to make like Dogma or some or Dragoon. My bad. I'm not sure why you do that, but you can. You can use this as a dark armed. You could use this to use. Well, it's not the monsters in here that you're basically doing, other than Greffer. Maybe Greffer you would use. Or even Necromancer to get other stuff out, you know, some crazy stuff. His thing is more towards the synchro monsters in here. Except for this one that we're about to go over. <laughs> Alright, Infernity Demon Dragon, he destroys a, you can destroy a card, a monster card on the field while you have no cards in hand. And yeah, inflict damage equal to half his attack, or half the attack of the monster you destroyed. And you can't attack this, so. The turn you, the turn you activate the effect, you can't attack this. So, uh, basically, also another thing, this card is the trees of infinity. Keep that in mind, because Mirage brings back this card. <laughs> it, it says infinity, and it brings back infinity monsters. So yeah, this card, yeah, is pretty godly in this deck. You're bringing out. Your opponent's like, oh, I'm Mirror Force Doom Dragon. Oh, that's cute. Because I've used Infinity Mirage. Or better yet, you could even use Necromancer to just bring it back from the grave. Oh, another thing to keep in mind, I like to just have face up Necromancers in defense and just keep synchroing up with these two until I get all the things I need. And then I'll probably synchro up with Necromancer. So yeah. This thing could become invincible if played right. Uh, one mist storm bounce things back. Pretty easy to bring out, I would say. Uh, one scrap dragon because it's a scrap dragon. One stardust because it's stardust, and we run two starlights because of this. Uh, you could throw in there stardust if you want, but I wanted to have one scrap dragon. Even if you want crimson blader, I guess it would be fine too. Another thing to keep in mind is that Crimson Blader will probably make your day not very happy, so keep that in mind. Uh, there's another good card I like to talk about. Uh, basically, if you destroy an opponent's monster by battle, you can then gain 800 attack and attack again. That is ridiculous. <laughs> I dual zone with this, and basically, it, it wrecked field. It really did. I use this deck in a tag duel and it, it just wrecked the field. Like, there's no joke. Like, I made two of these. Two, two of these guys. And they basically just wrecked the field. Like, if you have two of them, your opponent has two monsters. You attack once, destroy one monster. You attack with the other one, destroy the other monster. Then you attack with both of them for 6,000 damage. Holy smokes. That's pretty good. Other than that, it's pretty much not that great, but, you know, it's whatever. Uh, two Void Ogres, just to negate stuff, if you have no cards in hand, of course. Uh, I've gotten over it, and Malicious Zombies, really good card. And two Levolvel Chains to put, like, in front of the Archfiend on top of your deck to draw it in the next thing. The other thing to put, uh, Arch... Archfiends or Avengers or Patrol in the Grave. Pretty much it does all that and not too much more. So it's pretty good. I rarely see this card, but it's there to be there. So yeah. As for the side deck, there was stuff like Gaga -ga -ga Gunman, Gaga -ga or not Gaga -ga -ga. Oh gosh, why am I why do I keep saying stuff like that? 
there was Gaga Ga Ga Cowboy, there was um, Levier, I think it was called, where you ban it, you detach one to bring back a banished monster from your move from play zone. So, yeah. There was there. There was also a Fernity Break, which you banish one from your grave and destroy a card your opponent controls and get down no cards. Now, the only reason we don't have it in the deck is due to the fact that it banishes and you don't really want to banish your monsters most of the time. But if you feel like you need more destruction, you can have it in there. So, yeah. If you hear a dog, I'm sorry. There's not much I can do about it. Other than telling him to be quiet like 50,000 times a day. Uh, also, another card that you might see that gets played is Beetle. As I said, you have to have no cards, and I figured it said that. So, ending up drawing into one of these while you. Like, having three of one type of tuner that. You know. Uh, let me explain a little better. You have three Shining Angels in the deck. You summon one Shining Angel, and you have a Shining Angel in hand. You know, you're kind of going minus off of it. Except the fact that if this. While this card is like a Shining Angel in a way, you can't tribute this if you have an Inferno Beetle in hand. So, yeah, and if you send that to the grave and you tribute this, you're basically going one for one. If you get what I mean. Basically, we have two Inferno Beetles in our deck because I drew one. It. it like, I have one on the field, and then I have one in hand. I'm going minus if I don't, you know, find a way to put both of them on the field. I don't know. I guess you could, I guess you only play like two of them anyways, but it's not really worth playing it. I don't think it's that great of a card too much anymore. I thought it was because level two and, you know, level twos are easier to make synchros with. But, you know, it doesn't really help out. Avengers most likely the superior one. There's also Zero Max, which is a spell card that basically is Black Rose. <laughs> so you special summon an Infernity back from your grave, and you destroy all face up... Oh, actually it's more like Dark Hole. Destroy all face up monsters with lower attack than a special summon monster. So of course you would bring back Infernity Doom Dragon, as we've gone over, and since in the game Yu-Gi-Oh, it's very unlikely you have more than 3,000 attack points. Everything gets blown up, so... Yep, that's pretty much it for that. And another thing to run in the stack, if you really want to, which I would not be against you running, other than a Lord of Darkness, is uh, Summoner Monk. Because you can discard a spell, bring out Archfiend, Archfiend Special, gets this effect, then you would XYZ into Lavalvo Chain, dump Arch Avenger, or even top deck into another Arch Fiend, you know, whatever you feel like. It's all up to you what you want to do with the deck. I pretty much exhausted myself. Uh, another side deck card you can use is Goes in Match as well. I might as well say this. And yeah. So that's pretty much it for the deck. I give it a 7 out of 10. I can't give it an 8 out of 10 because of the fact that, you know, if you draw 6 spells or traps, and you don't end up using your spells and traps due to the fact of Road Decree, as you can tell, this deck is very trap heavy. If, like, you set, like, Torrential, Start, Light Road, Solemn, Mirror Force, and. Inferno for whatever reason. And then your opponent goes, okay, set three. You go, roll the creek. You can't activate anything now. You could chain Inferno, Inferno, whatever, but let's pet, pretend like it's two Starlight, one Solemn, and two Mirror Force. If you can't set stuff, you're pretty much gonna lose because you need to get rid of your back row. You need to have no cards in your hand for this deck to work. That's why this deck can't get 8 out of 10, but it pretty much definitely 7 out of 10 because of the fact that it can make such big plays. Sorry the video's so long. Sorry that 
Sorry, er, sorry if I confused you. As I said, I'm still like learning this deck till today, and I'll still be learning it as time goes on. But you know, basically give it a try, guys, and see what you like about it. Maybe you guys will play Infernity too. I don't know. Uh, I also recommend not using this in tag. <laughs> For a deck with, that requires no hand, unless you're doing double infernities, I'd rather not use it in tag. Just saying. There are way better de decks than using infernities in tag. So, Sorry for the 30 minute long video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As I say in all my videos, if you enjoyed the deck, make sure you leave your comments in the section down below. Tell me your thoughts. Did you think I did a good job? Did you think... Or would you change some stuff about it? What you keep in, what you take out, you know, whatever. As I said, you might run Beetle version, you might run only one Avenger, but this is the version I run and I think it runs perfectly fine for my taste. And it makes sense to me this way, so Yeah. A 30 minute long video. Catch you guys later. <laughs>